Hey, hello, this is Captain. So I'm in my test world for my career build series, and so what I wanted to do is I decided that for the tanker that I was uh, working on, you know, a lot of people are making some great tankers for the build challenge Charlie. I made a shell as kind of an example with some of the systems in it, and so I thought I'd like, you know, I just finished, or finished, but I just um, did some good work on the seaplane in the career build series, and so in the career build series, I want to you know, I did a bunch of building the last few episodes, and so I decided that I think it would be a little bit better. I'll make this a nice long episode of pretty much just me working on this tanker. And if you're interested in seeing some more building, you watch that. And then uh, next episode of the Career Build series is going to be more focused on actually going out and doing some missions. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. And so this is beginner base size, this tanker that I was working on, um, you know, because it was for the challenge. And so let's go ahead and bring it in here and let's uh, start working on it. So uh, kind of let's take a quick little recap. So I pretty much have some analogs here of weight blocks here simulating a pilot house. I have some analog weight blocks here simulating engines and some of the engine room systems. We have our, what is this? This is ballast water here. This is the commodities tank that will hold the oil. And this is the fuel tank. I don't know why I have two of these. What is this? One, one spawner, one's meter. Okay. And so everything just has seawater in it. Now, I, if uh, memory serves, the game does not differentiate the masses between them. So, you know, I just put in water as an analog to test it. So let's go ahead and let's start working on this. Let's. I think it's probably good to plumb in the engines first, I would say. So... Currently right here I have in some weight blocks. That's just my analog for the engine. So let's get rid of those and actually put some in. So we're going to want them to be, we're going to want them to have the flywheels because they're going to be maintaining a, a speed for, it, it's going to be maintaining the same speed for a considerable amount of time. It doesn't really need to, doesn't really need to, change speed very often. Let's actually do this really quick. Let's save this as a small tanker. Okay. Now let's actually change bases really quick. Um, so I want to maintain this to be able to go into the beginner base. And so we'll teleport there and we'll actually build it there. So in the career build series, I also have this other base unlocked. So I could go larger, but I'm going to try to stick with making this here so that I can you know, we only own two bases, so this will allow me to use it at either base successfully. All right, so let's start with a crankshaft piece on either side. I pretty much, I mainly only ever do one-by-ones. You know, there's no reason for me really to go to a two-by, to a um, to a three-by-three three on this. I could probably, but I'm not, you know, I'm not looking for ultra speed. Speed is not really all that important to me. So here we go. Set setting that up. Okay, so that's flywheels. Try this side. Maybe I will. You know what? Maybe I'll um. Maybe I'll change it up a little bit and do a three by three. I might do that. Let's do that. So we have a three by three crank here. I'm just trying to see where this is going to line up. See, the issue is space wise. I don't have the space really for for these. Actually, I could. I could put them up on a step here. So let's do that. Ah, oh, come on. Give me that, please. Thank you. Cut that. Raise them, and then I can I can change this to uh, work for me here. It's probably right there. How big is the flywheel? I need to look at the flywheel. Uh, how big is the three by three flywheel? Three by three flywheel is enormous. They're also incredibly heavy. I'm gonna go back to one by ones. I just they're easily configurable. It's so easy for me to add extra cylinders if I need them. I can take off cylinders if, if I don't want them. It's just super simple, and so we'll stick with that, I think. Let's see. Yep, we'll, we'll do a regular. We'll do this crank here. All right. Yeah, I'll start adding cylinders on there. So it's at a 20 cylinder, two 20 cylinders. All 
you know, I have, what are they, two 24 cylinders on the tugboat. The tugboat has to be able to haul a lot more mass than this does. Let's look out here really quick. So that is, okay, so. All right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and we'll put a raised piece here. Uh, enclosed pipe. Just stick a standard block there. And then that will allow me to raise these up and... Because I want to be able to walk around them. I like having a little bit of an engine room. I don't need a huge engine room or a completely encompassing engine room. I just need, I just want some of it. So let's cut that and raise it. And then this will allow me to go all the way to there. I'm going to probably need, oh, I'd say two gearboxes. So I could extend that back one more. Yeah, no, I can't because of that's a two by. You know, I'll do, let's do this. Let's paste this for now. I don't want to get too far in the weeds with what I have to do here yet. That can come later. Okay, let's merge these up. All right, so the engines are on like that. Let's go ahead, and I want to put a kind of a self-leveler in the fuel tank. So here are my fuel tanks, and so I'm just going to punch a hole here, put fluid ports like so. I need to punch a hole here and put a block like that. All right, so as you can see, that's going to go all the way through, and that's just going to let the fuel automatically level itself. I'm not going to bother pumping it or doing anything else. It's just kind of auto-leveled. All right, so those two engines are in. I'm going to need at least two gearboxes, so what I think I'm going to do is let's do this. I think this might actually look pretty good to do it like this as well. All right, and then I don't want it like that. Let's go like this. All right, good. And one more, and then that gives me some more space for just a straight line. And then this will make this kind of like a keel. So you have kind of like two twin keels there. Often you'll have a central keel just for stability anyway. So that will set that up. All right, and then I can do at least the two gearboxes, which it's pretty much going to be two gearboxes is all I need. Like, the tugboat is very important for it to be able to have the same thrust forward and back. This one, it does not matter. It doesn't need the same thrust forward and back. You know, it's not pushing and pulling and doing a bunch of that stuff, so it can be like this, and that's fine. All right, so engines are in there. We, we have weight blocks in, in the bow there. All that, you know, weight blocking allows me to move things as necessary to wherever I want them. So I kind of want almost like a centralized pilot house here. Has some back area because I might want to put a davit and a uh, a boat. I'm trying to think of what it, the name of the boat I'm trying to think of, but um, essentially it would be a boat for um, a dinghy. Can't believe I couldn't think of the name dinghy, but um, yeah, put a dinghy back there. So I want to be able to do that. Light boat dinghy, something towards that effect. Let's undo that. All right. Right there, I think. I think that's the one I want. There we go. All right, and so that's there. Let's check water where the water's sitting. So I want to. I want this kind of sit at the water line, so we can go down just a little bit. Nope, that's all the way at the bottom. That's good where it is. Okay, get rid of that nonsense. All right, and so I don't want this to be overly huge. This back section here. So maybe there, I'd say at the very most, probably do this, and then like so. I'm kind of digging that. Right. And so this will be probably... Uh, we don't need a huge... It doesn't need to be ultra tall. You know, again, the visibility on a tanker doesn't need to be great, you know. Yeah, this is going to be... We're going to do some docking, but it's also going to be out to sea a bunch, so...
There we go. That's that. All right. So we'll see how this uh, looks for me. So we'll have a centralized helm, I believe. It's not going to be huge by any stretch of the imagination. All right. So let's see. Let's do a quick measurement. How tall are we here? So that is... Uh, I didn't even look. I let go before I looked. Uh, that's 10 blocks. Okay. So proportionally, that looks pretty good because we're going to be putting on a roof and a folding antenna. A mast, rather. May have antennas on the mast, but it is a mast. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of a step up in here, I think. Let's do... Let's see. So our character is 7, so generally like 8 or 9 is about how low you want to go. So what's that, 9? That's 10 there. So let's do, I don't know, let's do one step, see how that, see how that works for me. Make a little asymmetrical. All right, let's do a sliding door for now. May change it later, but I kind of want a sliding door at the moment. Sliding door is just good space-wise. Yeah, I'll probably do one more step up at the helm just to get even better vis visibility than there. For now, I'm just going to cut out a floor piece here. It's not a big deal, but I just don't... I tend not to like have, to have doubled up blocks because then I have to just think about the mass of them where this is kind of guaranteeing that I'm not going to have a mass issue. All right, and then... cut. Oh, come on, man. Cut you, cut you. Go back, 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 back. Oh my god, man. Why wouldn't you just go where I want you to? That's the other thing. Go there, go there. There we go. Alright. Being annoying. There we go. Okay, that's in. Alright, and then helm. I'll probably put a step up on the helm. So let's do... Oh. It's not... doesn't not want to click where I want it to click. Let's see. Where are we at there? We are at 7. That's 8. We'll do one more step up. Just give it a little bit of detail in here. Little bit of detail in. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, we'll see how it functions, too. You know, it might be a pain to do all that. All right, uh, helm. Probably end up changing that step up. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to see where essentially it's going to be, and then I can change it after that. All right, so that's good there. What do we have there? I'm just counting blocks. So do eyebrows all around, all around, and then this will be the main window blocks there. All right. Got to work in on windows here. Oh, come on. Stop flicking around, camera. I appreciate that. Kind of thing, especially with the tanker, I kind of want a flatter, less sculpted bridge. All right. And what are we looking at here? Let's 
I don't think I have a big one for that. It's three by it's three by four by four. I do. Okay. All right, there we go. That's that. All right, so let's take a quick little look at just functionality of that bridge here for me. So open the door, step up, step up here. Good viz on there. I'm looking well over the top there. Yeah, I'm looking at that. That's looking good. All right, good. I think what I'll do is make the whole height that contiguous, so... Let's try this. Cut that, move it up one. Let's delete that step, go like this. Make a uh, symmetry, please. Thank you. Landing, landing, landing. Uh, let's see, railing, railing. All right, let's put this top step here. All right, so there's stairs that will be railing, railing around. That works. Okay, good. So that's that. Let's go ahead and then what you want to, I'm going to raise this whole floor up to here so this floor can. I don't necessarily need to cut it out, but um, I don't want the mass of it, so just add a bunch of mass for no reason. So cut that like that. All right, and then here. So let's test that out. I want to do probably here. Let's see, two by threes. Symmetry is not on. Awesome, awesome. Symmetry is on when I don't want it on. There we go. I like having a little bit of asymmetry is kind of nice. Yeah, let's save that. We might put a camera there, I think. We'll see how I like that. Trying to keep it a little bit on the... Uh, Open side back there. I'm not a huge fan of the little windows in the back like that, but good, really good visibility here. I'd like to put another thick bezel here to kind of cut down these really thin bezels, but um, I don't know. I do not know. But good vis on this. Feels comfortable with the helm. Plenty of spaces for gauges and dials and whatnots. Yeah, okay, good. A little bit of an excessive stepping here. I think this this just because I need so much for railings and everything, I think it's better just to do I think I can cut under there and put the top step there. Just to cut down on the distance, but we'll see. That just steepens it up a little bit. Let's test that out. Make sure that works properly. Yep. And we're in. Nice, nice. Okay. 
All right, good. So it looks like this is much lighter than what the weight blocks were. That's fine. Um, if you saw the me when I built this part of it, I put weight blocks in the in the bow, and part of it was I can easily take those out. So by putting ballast, you know, heavy ballast weight like weight blocks all around, it makes it easier for you to change that up as necessary. All right, so let's see what I want to do next here. So I could work on the pumping system. Let's go. Okay, so this is, I'm just going to cut this and move this in. You know what? Let's get it running. Let's get the engine started. I will, I pretty much always rebuild all my, all my microcontrollers now and start from scratch. It's a little bit of a pain, but I think I get better, better results out of that. So let me quickly... And some, and you know, people who are curious about how some of this is set up can watch this. Uh, let's see, engine. Okay, engine controller. You know what I think I'm gonna do? Instead of wasting the time on this, let's do this. Let's delete that. Let's save that. Let's bring in the uh, tugboat. And the only thing that's really different is the Azipod control. So let's just grab one of the micros. Where the hell is it? It's got to be this one. Let's bring that in. Yeah, this will just save me a little time, I think, to do it this way. You know, one of the reasons I like to re you know make them all the time is they get better and better at it each time. Plus, it just it can be kind of bespoke for that particular vehicle, but it is a pain. So it can be a pain sometimes. So let's go clutch as he pivot. So as he pivot is fine. That's going to be rudder instead. That's really simple. Just change that over to rudder. Still, I'm still going to do the limitation on there and everything else. So that's all set up. All right. And that'll end up getting changed a little, but I'll I'll have them in there independently as necessary. As a position I don't need. Let, let's get rid of everything I don't need on there, just to be able to shrink up the panel before I hook everything up. So here, if you, if you move things around, then they get disconnected. So panel and rudder, reverse. Reverse, alternator, clutch, battery, prop thrust. Don't need prop thrust. Don't need as a position. That that still doesn't really shrink it at all, but um, it gives me space in case I need anything else. So that works. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Let's get in there and see what we can do here. So, yeah, see, this just makes it so much easier. I don't have to redo everything for no real reason. Okay, that's all set up. All right, good. So this this will save me a bunch of time. RPS goes there. What do we have here? Battery. I haven't put in a battery yet. Alternator, clutch. I haven't put in alternators yet. Okay, so all that needs to go on. So let's do that. Symmetry is coming on to save myself any pain and anguish. Starter. So let's put air central right there. I'm thinking fuel can go fuel can go there. Exhaust. Where am I at? Okay, perfect. So I'm right. Wheelhouse is right above me, so that's nice. I'm gonna probably do a wet exhaust on this. That will go out the back. So let's go. Where's exhaust pipes? All right, that will go like that. Manifolds. All right. 
Not that I need it, but I'll put a fourth one on there. Okay, so manifolds are on there to plumb these up. You know, I may, may not make this into a room where you actually go down there. I might make a little crawl hatch. I haven't decided yet. It has a little bit of interest to go down there. But um, it can also be a pain. Then I have to plumb it up. So let's go ahead and start plumbing so they can get the engines running. So I'm thinking... Can't go there. It's got to be here in these stacks here, which is fine. Alright, so it's going to be here. So let's go ahead and we will cut this out. So these are going to be my air stacks. I'm going to do a, uh, like I said, do a wet exhaust. The tugboat has a dry exhaust, so this one will be wet. All right, so that is in there. So that will have my air intakes. All right, good. So that's air. And where are you coming down? Right here. That's actually pretty convenient. All right. And I put it on that side, which I don't need, so I actually want to delete these out again here. Let's go copy them and then stick them. Of course, I stuck that there. Why wouldn't I have? There we go. All right, that just makes it a lot closer and a lot easier to get to. I don't have to worry about as much. Okay, good. Bingo. Bingo. All right, so air is plumbed. Let's go ahead and plumb fuel next. Fuel is the is is the fuel's right here. Let's go. All right, so that is going to be fuel right there. Okay, good. Let's, um, let's see, where can I put this wet exhaust out? You do wet. I really just like the look of dry exhaust uh, usually, which is like the actual exhaust stacks. I really do. So, hmm. I think I'll do wet exhaust. I'll make it overly annoying here. So that contorts there. Trying to see if there's any way I can get it in here. I might. See, I can't make the curve is the issues. No way to do an elbow on the actual fluid ports, which is kind of bleh. I can just do side. Yeah, let's have it go right at the side. What's, what's wrong with me? Okay, good. And then this one I tend to gray out just because, like, in IRL, they often either wrap them or, or they're, um, you know, they have to be a different type of metal because they have to withstand the heat. So they're not just, they generally don't just direct paint them. Might wrap them or do something else. All right. And so we have a wet exhaust there. That's simple. Okay, I was over trying to overcomplicate it. So I decided wet exhausts. All right, so let's plumb this in the rest of the way. Rudder. Fuel. Air is there now. Alternator clutch. I haven't put any alternators on there yet. Battery I haven't done yet. Reverse is going to be the back one. Starter is going to be this one. All right. Uh, what do I have on gearing on the other one? Let's do, I don't know, two to, let's do a four to one. Oh, no, we can't do a four to one. Two, four to one is too high. Let's do what's that. That's three, two, three, two would be what? That would be a six over four. So six divided by four. Okay, so you're talking two and change. 
no, not two and change. What would be one point something? That's a little bit on the low end here. But let's try it. So we'll do a pair of three twos. Would be a one one four. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll do the calculation really quick. All right. So let's see. So uh, six divided by four. Yeah, one point five. So that's a one point five one. So we'll probably end up upping that, but I want to start with that. Let's go ahead and hook up the composite. So we have engine, datum, helm, uh, panel in, panel, panel. Okay, so this is this is already pre-programmed for all the panels on the tugboat. Let's see. Let's do this. Let's save this as small. Put another L on there. Why don't we do that? Okay, so I'll take a backup. Let's go ahead and load the tugboat. There's a time to add a bunch of bespoke stuff, and there's a time not to add a bunch of bespoke stuff. And I am not interested in making a ton of bespoke stuff. And so this will be make it a lot easier to hook everything up here by doing this. Right. I don't have any ceiling. I have ceiling panels, but I can grab them later. All right, so this is coming in. Just trying to see if I like that bridge design a little bit better. Kind of the square or bridge design that I had in the other one. All right, we'll start ravaging this for parts here so that can go. Try to cut what I can cut and leave what I have to leave. Okay. So let's play with that, see if I can't get that back in there. Okay, let's put that back. It's more parts. I want to delete all this stuff on the outside. That's just going to be a pain. Oh, delete something I needed? I did not. Okay, good. But I can cut out that like that. I'm going to cut this. All right, let's cut that now and try to just slot it in. It just makes it a lot easier. Especially most of the systems, or a lot of, let's put it this way, a lot of the systems are going to be very similar or the same. So might as well just slot it in. Let's merge it. See, I can always undo if I need to undo. Okay. So let's see what we want here. I think what I'm going to do is cut you here. And I'm going to redo the windows here. It's too bezely and not enough. Yeah, it's far too bezely and not enough. Um, not enough solid. Right. And this is just, this post doesn't have anything on it, but. And that will inform me where the post needs to go, so I will grab it. I'm in the back wall, so I can't do that. Okay, good. I'm just going to cut this because it has all sorts of weird coloring on it, and I don't want to have to go back and fix all the colors. So I'll just take off symmetry for a second here. Okay, symmetry can go on, kill that window there. All right, we'll fix up, fix some of these windows here.
I want a little bit of a feel. I don't want it to just feel like I'm the exact same pilot house that I have on the other one. So I want a little bit of difference on there. Why I'm dragging all the way up because I just have to cut that again. Okay, what? I knew I should have started from this side. Okay, let's just go back like that. Okay, good. I meant to drag this up first and I didn't. I regret it. So. That is pretty good there. Not good. Now we'll see. I might move that back one, but we'll see. Let's do, let's move this back all, this, see, this is the issue here is, I can move my exhaust, I guess. I can, try, I can move my exhaust, or my uh, intakes back, that's fine. So let's go, kill that, grab you. There's a three banger there. Okay. Okay, so make this feel a little bit more spacious in here as well. That's that's a three window there. And I don't like the back windows here at all, so. Let's switch this door out. That's the issue with the sliding door. I, I'm gonna put, can I put a custom? I could put a custom on there. I have to move the step if I do a custom door. If I just do this for now, at the very least, we'll have something in there. Okay. And we'll cut these in here. All right, and then, of course, I left symmetry on. Why would not I have? There we go. That's, you know, the helm can easily look behind. We'll probably put a camera or something there anyway. Maybe. Don't really need it, generally. You know, people take for granted modern vehicles, especially. I don't have symmetry on. 
Uh, modern vehicles, especially cars, have cameras all over them. That uh, back in the day, my day, they didn't have cameras all over them. So you just moved your body and looked. So we'll move our body and look if need be. Okay, that's in. All right, nice. So that's that took about a bunch of work there. Okay, Simul tree is on. Beautiful. So again, I kind of want this to have like a little bit of sitting area, just to be a little cozy area to sit. Again, this is like a small, tiny little coastal tanker. Probably wouldn't it would probably be used for just refilling other ships and vehicles, you know, frankly. So, yeah, but we're going to use it, of course, to move commodity. Okay. Let's go out. Start doing some of this glass here. I need to do the uppers there. All right, and let's get that last piece of window that we need there. It's coming along nicely. Just, uh, you know, I'm happy with it. It's working out. Just maybe put a little bit of a detail on here. Little bracing details in here, I think, are nice to kind of you know, structural bracing type of dealios. I don't know about the side ones. The front ones I like, but the side ones I'm not thrilled about. So I might get rid of those. Okie doke, that's going. All right. Again, I want this to be really simple. Um, I don't want it to completely replace the need for me to do barge work. So that's important there. I'm just going to quickly look up some oil tankers. Just for some color. I think it's nice to get a little paint on. It really starts to make me kind of get interested in the build a little bit more. So black hull, red all around, white superstructure. Okay. That's kind of a common theme. There are, are some branded ones that are different, but, you know, we Come up with our own brand if we like later. All right. All right, so kind of do that. I want to put like the no smoking sign on the front. All right. I really like the black and red as a color scheme. I have yet to name the tugboat either. I would like to name that at some point. And I kind of have my own anti-fouling color that I use, but um, I might use a darker one this time. So I tend to use this. Let me see if I can get more in the red range there, like maybe that. That's good. It's a little bit better, I think. Like if we look at the difference here, what is that? That's 168, 168. I don't know. Yeah, let's do the brighter color for now. This will be a little bit different than most of what I do here. You know, I have to always see what it looks like in the world as well. I could use the bucket, but one of the things the bucket does is it paints the interior blocks between the two blocks, and it can cause lag, and I'm not interested in that, so... It also paints things I don't want it to paint, and I spend half the time going back and fixing what it does. So it really does not save me a ton of time to, to do the bucket. I'd rather get it right the first time and not have to go back and re, redo it because something didn't work exactly how I wanted it. So paintbrush always just lets me do it exactly how I want it. I'm not getting any real overpaint and overspray. Let's just do this while I'm here. Huh, are the hubs? I didn't know, is that new to color the hubs a different color now? Huh, I've, I don't know if I've ever noticed that before. That's interesting, huh. Perhaps it's not new, perhaps I'm just noticing it for the first time. But interesting, no, don't do that, you. Okie dokie. All right, let's, Fix that, finish that up. Try not to over color anything I don't want. All 
one thing I often like with painting these boats is it's like, you know, you, especially under the water line, you don't need a ton of detail. It's like a plane or something, you might want to put a ton of detail in it because it's visible and it might look a little flat and blank. But like the boat, this is all sitting under the water. So it's like, you know, it's like IRL. There's not a lot of detail there. So you put some name badges up top or something. All right, so yeah, it's just that little bit of character. I'm gonna do one bucket. That's on the bottom. Hopefully, it doesn't. I don't regret it. All right, a little bit of painting there, and then they're doing almost okay. So there's different ones that are doing different colors. So let's go do a bucket there. This is not a bad bucket candidate there either. I'm just going to go inside and make sure I didn't paint a bunch of scrap that I don't want to paint. It did not. Okay, good. Sometimes the bucket I, I thoroughly regret. Sometimes I don't. So. All right, nice. That's looking pretty good. Spawn that in really quick. Did I really add? Oh, there's a hole in there from air intakes. I would, yep, right there. Okay, good. Symmetry's on, nice. Okay, good. All right, that's replumbed. All right, good. So that's kind of on the way. All right, so let's finish up hooking these engines up. I want to get this moving. So the the whole reason I did all of that was. The ability to hook these panels up and so that really gets me going on hooking panels up so this one i think goes to here okay i think i have them daisied so let's go ahead and we will uh let's go ahead and save this let's open up the tug I'm gonna have to do some changes on the other engine on the other um I just let's first look at this. Oh come on man, don't do that. I hate that. Uh let's see. Alright, so this comes from that panel I just plugged it in, then panel goes to the other Azipod controller. Okay, good. Helm goes to the autopilot, so What happened to the, the... I didn't scroll up, that's why. Okay. I'm going to say don't take it away. And then these panels will all end up in the fuel tanks. You know, somebody didn't realize they were asking why. You know, they said, tell me I don't need to put them in the fuel tanks. Put them in the fuel tanks gives you more fuel. They take up less space, so you put them in your fuel tanks, and then you're saving fuel. Or just you're giving yourself more space, essentially. What is that? That is anchor control. That doesn't go there. Where does this panel need to go? That is winch. Um, what are you? Where the hell is the Im input for this? Right here. Okay, there we go. I could not find it. All right, engine, engine here. So I want to get these fired up. I want to give give this a little run. So helm. I'll do here. Um, so I'm pretty much steer. If I could speak the English language, pretty much steering the. You know, because this doesn't have azipods, this uh, I can just do the rudder from that, and I'm good. 
Let's put in alternators. Where are you at there? There we go. Just so I can hook them up. I'm going to go infinite electricity. It's still kind of my preferred method is run it without, run it with infinite electricity to start with, and then hook it all up. Even though the systems are in place here, so I pretty much don't need to change it too much. But that's going to be alternator clutches on port. Air. Fuel. Clutch. As a pivot, we leave blank. That's blank. That's battery. We leave that blank. We don't need that. Alternator clutches. Reverse. Starter. All right. RPS needs to plug in. All right, good. So that's that. Everything else set up there that it needs. Yep, helm's fine. Don't need the helm hooked up there. I think we're good. Let's try a start. Infinite ELEC is on. Good, good, good. All right, good. We're back to floating. That's always a positive sign. All right. Um, it's not connected. Oh, I know why. I have water in my fuel tanks just for when I was doing the weight testing here. So that's going to go to diesel. Diesel. There we go. That novel idea to put diesel in for your diesel engines. There we go. All right. Uh, let's see. Bridge power I'm not going to get, so I'm just going to go. Not reading any of my gauges. So the engines, I think, are up and running. So a bunch of my gauges aren't running, so. Yeah, like I'm getting nothing on that. That's weird. Okay. Let's see what's wrong. All right, so the panel comes from here into there, goes back out to this one, then this one goes here. This is dis this is disconnected here. That has to go like that. All right, that should hopefully fix it. What is that? Oh, this is bearing system. That's wrong. Okay, I hooked up to the wrong thing. So this is bearing. I hooked up to this, where this should hook to there. Okay, that would be why nothing's working correctly. We're not going to get any backlights, so. There we go. That's better. Uh, my... Helm is not configured. So we want WS. It's going to be port. Rust. Up down is going to be reset 100%. What is that? Left, right. Star. Rust. AD. That's fine. Okay, good. What are you doing, guy? Sounds so low, I can't hear anything either. All right, what the heck is going on here? Uh, let's see. Okay, so we have helm. That's fine. That's good. Hell is 31. What the hell is 31? That's the question. Sorry, I hit the mic. Um, <laughs> disconnect that for now. It's resetting it on me. I don't, I need to figure out why I'm doing that.
Why is my clutch not coming up at all? Hmm. Yeah, let's look at my drivetrain, make sure that's all connected properly. So we have, did I connect the clutches? Clutch is connected there. Clutch is connected there. Okay. That's fine. Reversers are hooked up. The hell is going on with my um my gears here? And not my gears, my clutch. Where the hell's my clutch? Down here, I think, on this build, right? Nope, that's rudder. Closet one rudder. It's just goes right in, right? Yep, okay. Where the hell here's that's alternator clutch. Where is my engine clutch here? There it is. Thirty-one. So what the hell is thirty-one? That's I need to try to recall what the hell thirty-one is. So where is that? So that's or those are ores. Are those ores? I think those are ores. Yeah, those are ores. Yeah. So that that's not doing it. Okay, let's do this. Let's get rid of that for now. That resets the clutches to zero. So let's get rid of that for now and I'll play with that in a minute. That clutch is at one, but it's doing nothing. That clutch is, let's bring this one up, see if I can't get this clutch to engage. So poor clutch is at full, this is at zero. Okay, what the hell. Uh, let's go downstairs and see what the hell is going on here. That's running well. So clutch pressure is at one. So how the hell can clutch pressure be at one and none of this RPS is coming through? Where's my, can I get a crank please? There you go. That's the cylinder. I want a crank, dude. Let me, show me the crank, you ding dong. Can't see any of the crank cases, that's annoying. So that's showing a clutch pressure of one, that's showing a clutch pressure of zero, which is what upstairs is showing. That's very, very low. Come on, man. Why is this all screwed up now? What is going on here? Right, let's just make sure everything's hooked up again. We'll do that before we have any issues here. So that's all connected to there. Oh, I have no blower on here. I need to put a blower on here. So I need a um, supercharger. Let's put a supercharger in here. Let's go. Cut you, cut you, cut you. Uh, I can't cut those. Okay. Cut you. Superchargers in there. No superchargers, so that could very well do it. Oh, I forgot to put a supercharger on there. Oh, I do not know. It's not the side I want it to be showing. That's fluid out. That's fluid in. Okay. Which one is fluid out? Fluid in is up. Okay. All right, good. So this just needs to be I'm going to 
to you again. Fluid in, perfect. All right, that's good. Thought it might be just the one. It is. Nice. All right, so let's try that. It should give us a better, uh, better power. Because if if it's not ever getting up to the RPS that it needs, it's not going to ever engage that clutch. So. <laughs> hell is going on here? I don't get this. This is being very strange to me. Work clutch. Is that one? Engine arp. So the engine's... No, that might not be even be running right. So what are we talking? 300? 300 divided by 60. That's 5. That's 5 RPS right there. Why it's bouncing around, I, don't, I do not... I do not get... Oh, I put, you know what, stupid ass me. I put the, everybody's probably screaming at the screen. I put the clutches and the flywheels in the wrong order because I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Yeah. I just jammed them on there quickly to kind of test for space, and I didn't actually mean to plumb them up yet. So I ended up putting them on there for space testing, and then I put it backwards. No wonder this wasn't, I, I was thinking, like, that's why it's not running through. So it's not. Connected correctly. Oh, come on, man. Just give me where I want it. Yeah, pain in the ass. There we go. That would be why. Yeah. So, simple fix there, but, uh, you know, these blowers need to go in anyway, so they are in. Uh, let's go you. I'm just going to drag it because I can't click on what I want because it's invisible and I can't see where I'm supposed to be clicking. So, let's go like this. Cut you, move you one this direction. I love the way that this game does the selection and merge tools. Is it they're you know they're very intuitive. Some games are a pain to to be able to move parts, and you know it's a lot easier to just redo them. This one is actually pretty convenient to just be able to do that. Like it deleted the blocks that I wanted to delete. You know it wasn't like hey you have to pick which one you want. All right, there we go. You know, I cut my ears, but I'll fix that. That's not a big. That's not a big uh, problem. A little bit of a pain in the ass, but it's not bad. Okay. So exhaust is there now. Of course you are. Um, let's see. All right. So there, you know, there's a reason why the last one I built the. Uh, the PTO for the uh, supercharger was right in the back was because it had to go over the um, flywheel. So I put this PTO right in the back there. Okay, which side is which? That is fluid out. Perfect. Okay. All right, we're cooking with gas now. I just wasn't thinking why the hell that would be screwed up, and it was a me problem. Usually it is, you know. I find a lot of people go, oh, the game's broken, and sometimes it is, absolutely. But also, it's you screwed something up, and, you know, it's not the game. So sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But, you know, I make these mistakes as well all the time. So, sometimes it is the game, sometimes it is not. Sometimes it's you made a silly mistake that you, you know, you've done something a hundred times and you still make that mistake. All right, good. So, let's try this now. So, we're at a much, right about 50% gear ratio to what the tugboat has. I don't need that this time. All right, so see how, I was wondering why the engines were able to start so quickly. And it was because they were able to start really quick because the um, 
The flywheels actually weren't even connected. All right, that's connected. That's connected here. We have exhaust. These are not connected to the friggin' controllers anymore. All right. There we go. Yeah, that's the wrong one. Where is it? Right there. Okay, now that will fix it, hopefully. That should do it. Yeah, I was wondering, like, why are these engines starting so much quicker than the other ones? Uh, it's because in my head, they I connected them correctly. But sometimes the second pair of eyes, having somebody else look at your bills can be helpful. It's like, you know, somebody who has, like, 100 hours in the game could have easily spotted that problem. So one engine is revving up. The other one is not. I have the, the starboard rudder needs to be... Inverted, so usually one of them is going to need to be inverted. This one is. Alright, painty paints here. Where is there? There's another spot there. Zang. Okay. Alright, so why is this one now not freaking behaving, man? This one doesn't want to behave on this side. Check, make sure the helm configured for up down. Up down is 100% reset. AD is working. Nope, yep, that's steering. WS, 100% reset. That's fine. Why is it working over here? Make sure all the connections are done right. As he pivots, does not need to be hooked up. Clutch is connect to the clutch none of those need to be connected alternator clutches rps is connected okay engines connected yeah let's see what the hell is wrong with this now helm's connected helm this helm still needs to be connected to the helm okay that would be why i forgot to connect it okay that would do it. That would do it all the time, huh? All right, so we're on the move here. And so I, I haven't put in the aft um, speed sensor, but that will do the same thing, so. Nice. I bet we're doing a reasonable speed. Let's go ahead and yank that back. Let's go ahead and save this. Go ahead and grab the tug. And I want to start grabbing some microcontrollers. Um, let's see. So this is the uh, starboard engine. That's seat control. This is cockpit light. See, it's called seat control because it came from another build, and I have yet to um, change the name of it. What's that? Man overboard, heading hold, autopilot, bearing panel. Winch, so this uh, does not need a winch. Spots panel. Spots panel because it has other things on it too, but let's see. All right. Uh, let's see. Gonna copy that. Could just cut them, but I think I'm gonna copy them for now. I'm gonna reconnect everything anyways. I'm not yanking anything else. If, if I yanked them when I yanked the bridge, that would have made sense, but it's not, it doesn't make sense now to do it. So. You know, I was thinking of making a generic boat controller. You know, maybe I'll make a tutorial, a new tutorial. I like to I like to refresh the tutorials, you know, things change, not too much changes, but like I might streamline something or think of something that is helpful and so it's always good to redo them or have some newer ones every once in a while. You know, and also it the way the algorithms work for YouTube, you know, some of the newer content it will put up and so you know, if you're actively looking for something, you might have to put in the right keyword to see it. But if you, if it pops up, you're like, oh, I need that. You know, I need to, I need to know what that does. And then so you can, you know, you see it. It just puts it in your vision a little bit more. And you're like, oh, yeah, that would be interesting to learn that, you know, so. Or an old tutorial. And then, 
you know, you might not, oh, you say, oh, that tutorial is three years old. Well, it might still be valid, but you, you know, you might think, hey, the game changed enough that that's probably not valid anymore. And, you know, you don't know. So, haven't, you know, I've redone, especially the module engine tutorial, I think I've redone three times. And part of it is just maybe a little bit more concise, or you have a, you know, I have a better way of doing something, or a little bit clearer way to describe it. So, I like to redo some of that stuff anyway. So, this is the bearing panel. That's a common. That's the door pivot. I don't need that right now. That's just a regular door. Just I hit that there. Cut that. Sometimes I cut them. The reason I cut them is they stay attached. So like if I'm going to move panels and their, you know, these microcontrollers and their associated panel that they connect to, I cut them so the connections all stay the same, and then I can uh, port them right in. But all right, so all that's coming. Let's see. What else do I need? Door can stay. You were spots. Spots should come. Because this actually does spots and I think the water stuff for the firefighter nozzle. I'm not 100% if I can recall what, what I did there. Yeah, let's see what's on the other side. I think that's it on this side. Let's see. This is engine panel here. This is my. <laughs> so I put it into uh, got a comparison. This is how big the light mast um, panel is. Light mast because there's so many lights and they have combinations and you kind of have to deal with that. So that goes there. All right, and let's see what else we need. The other engine one's already in. One reason I started to change my mind and started deleting them is if I delete them out, then I can, um, I know what I've taken. What is this? That's the Harbor Gen. That could be Harbor Gen. We'll do that later. That's depth, compass sensor, depth. Okay, so this is my digital compass that's coming. Okay, put you the uh, come in. Zing, go right there. Go right there, guy. I like to just repaint him here again. It, you know, the game's trying to render a different color, even if it's like not visible, and so paint them all the same color. It doesn't have to render a thousand different colors. Uh, that's bridge power and harbor gen. That's coming. Fire nozzle's coming. Engine cooling is coming. So let's go. Right. Just expedite this process. But, you know, again, this is another thing that really is great about this game is, you know, like I was saying how great the... Um, you know, the selection grid and merge are, well, you know, it makes it so easy to move entire systems that you need. And then one thing I'll often do, which I probably should have done, but I didn't do, is at some point, once I get this kind of done and wrapped, I will drag out all the panels like this with their associated, or drag out all the microcontrollers with their associated panels and systems, and then I'll be able to just, you know, um, kind of streamline when I put together a build is I can just drag all of that in and be like, okay, you know, some people like, I know some of the SRS stuff is like that where they have just a lot of modules can easily throw them in. And, and so that just speeds things up. It really does help and speed things up to do that. But it also like, you kind of get stuck with some of your old bad habits. Some of your panels are old and Frankenstein and, you know, okay, you know, to use this term, it kind of, you know, with not that I know all that much about software development is that um, you know you talk about legacy code it's like your old way of doing something and now you're trying to spaghetti it in Frankenstein like I'm using the tug controllers for you know the tanker and I have to do a lot of changes to just make them work and so it's like you say so well maybe it would have been easier just to start from start fresh and that's why I often do start fresh so let's cut that that's a lot of crap. Uh, let's see. Go in here. All right. There we go. The nice thing is we have so many tanks and whatnot, like storage tanks and that, that are non-visible spaces in this. It makes it super easy to hide stuff. 
All right, so the mask can go last-ish. Bearing panel, I'm not doing that right now. That's Harbor Gen. Let's go on this side. Just I can see the demarcation of the panel a little bit better. This is heading hold, so that's port, starboard as a pod. Why is this control answer there? Weird. Okay, let's see. Mass tilt. Compass, keypad, this is the heading panel. The bear, yep. Okay, so I'm, let's do this. Cut you. Let's not do this right now, and then I think I'm going to take a break. Is the. I'm going to stick this all here. This is all work to do later. I'll probably do this off screen. It's just a lot of where does this go? Where does this go? Oh my god, where does this go? Um, and so what I'm going to do instead is do this. Let's let's get this um, set up for tankering, and so that's a linear speed sensor there, just give me speed, and I want to get the gearing correct. So we're not geared out correctly yet. So I need to know well, what speed am I getting. So let um, also when we get out there, you'll notice the bow is is dipping too low. So let's actually it's even worse now when I put all those panels. But uh, if you saw me build the beginning of this for the Build Challenge Charlie video, I put all these weight blocks in here. And the reason being is I can easily do this and now delete them out. And so it's essentially pre-ballasting. And then as you add systems like engines back there, um, you know, a bridge or a pilot house, you then know, okay, well, that system's done. I, I can re-ballast again. All right, so let's take it in its current state. And let's go ahead and we will see like the bow is sticking up really high now. And so that will need to be rebalanced. Alright, so I want to see what my general speed is. And I want to find out the best gearing for this. I'm gonna make sure my both clutches are at 100%. They are. Engines are up and stabilized. We are not at five, so we're at eight um, meters per second. So we're at 16 knots, which is a good speed for a tanker. So you see how I took up right way too much weight. So this has no. This currently has no storage in it. I don't think. There's no oil in here, you know, theoretically or. There's no simulated oil in here. Let's put that in there. So this should be seawater, 100%. Uh, probably be underwater. Uh, yep. So that has 100% um, oil in there. You know, simulated with water. You know, in real life, oil um, depends. Diesels, diesel jet fuels. Jet fuel is like 6.7 pounds per gallon. Water is 8-something pounds per gallon. Of course, you know, that's why it floats on top, is less dense. And so the, you know, in game, though, they weigh the same, apparently. And so I can easily use that as an, um, you know, as a uh, test test vehicle. Test method, let's put it that way. That's how I'm doing it on the challenges. I'm just doing it. All right, so that's 14-ish knots. Around 14 knots. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm not dissatisfied with that. If I increase the gearing, we'd be going faster. I don't need to go faster. Let's look at our RPS here. So we're currently two, let's say 219. All right, so 219 divided by 60. That's the wrong button. 219 divided by 60. Uh, that's 3.65. So actually, we'll probably want to gear this down a little bit. So let's go, let's look at the gearing. I probably want to gear this down a little bit. Uh, remember, the other thing to think about too is these propellers are larger than the Azipod ones. So the Azis are, see how much smaller these, pro I can't get them in the friggin' world. There we go. See how much small these propellers are than these large propellers? So I have greater resistance on these propellers. 
so I cannot spin them as fast as I could the other one. So I need, uh, you know, I already know I need down gear. So currently right now we're at a 3-2-3-2. Three, two, three, two. That's a 6 over 4, so pretty simple. 6 divided by 4 gives me a 1.5 gear ratio. Let's see, knock that down to a 6-5. So that would be a 6 times 3 divided by 10. That's a 1 point... What? I went the wrong way. No, I didn't. 6.5. I had 3, 2, 3, 2, right? 3, 2, 3, 2. So that's a 6 over 4. So 6 divided by 4. That's, yo, it's 1.5. Why the hell is that going up? That's weird. All right, a 6 times 3 is 18. Yeah, that's a 1.8. That's interesting. How the hell is that higher? Down gear and it's going higher. I don't know, man. All right, so... I'm probably just thinking of it wrong in my head. Okay, let's do that. I do not need symmetrical forward and back power like I do on a tugboat. I need to be able to tow things backwards. I need the power to be able to push things with my stern. This I don't. I need to be able to go forward and just enough backwards to be able to um, maneuver. So 6565 would be 12 over 10, that would be 1.2. 1, 1. Okay, so see, my RPM has increased. So now we're at 16 knots. Let's go down. So what we're doing here is, so, you know, people will tell you, oh, if you increase, you know, point the arrow towards the engine, increase the gear ratio, you go faster. Well, not necessarily. The engine is only so strong, just like a muscle is so strong, right? So if you are, have a skinny little arm, you might be able to move a one-pound weight up and down, up and down, up and down, and do a lot of curls with that one-pound weight, you know, really quickly. Now if I give you a 10-pound weight, you're, the speed at which you're able to do that curl is reduced because the load put on the power unit, your arm in this case, is reduced. And so your your revolutions per second are reduced because you're trying to do more work. And so the other thing comes into play too is you say, okay, well, I give you a half pound weight to curl. Well, you're going to be able to curl it even faster than you did the first one. All right, so we're going to do 6.565s five, six, on these. So we actually, you know what? I don't need this uh, probably. I, I definitely don't need two gearboxes, but let's see. So 6.565, six, five, six, five, that's a 12 over 10. That's a 1.2 to 1 gear ratio. And then if we just do a 6 divided by 5, that's a 1.2. So we don't need dual gearboxes on this. We just don't have the power on this engine. That's actually good. I can move that one block closer. So let's do this. Uh, let's not do that. Let's do this. See, these are already pre-connected for that. So I just kind of assumed we might be able to get that. Let's go to 6565. Six, and then I should be able to grab all of this. Grab the clutches. All right. And what I can actually do is, if if need be, I can add a, uh, four more cylinders on this because I'm pushing it four, uh, pushing it back one. But, you know, I may not need to. I often like to have some good detailing where I have, like, an engine room you can crawl down to or use. You know, sometimes I'm like, you know what, make that a dead space. Nobody can get in there. You know, but I probably will make it, especially seeing as it can be used in the career build series. You want to be able to repair stuff as well, so that's helpful to do. All right, so now our engines theoretically could be longer and more powerful. I could add, theoretically, I could add eight more cylinders if I wanted to. Again, I don't need ultra speed. I don't want ultra speed. So now we have that same um, one. This is a one to one point two to one gear ratio. So we're we're reducing the load on the. I'm going to screw it up in connection here, right there. Um, we are reducing the load again, so it's like that guy has that thin arm. Well, because he has a weak little arm, right, he can only lift so much. So if you say that you want it to go 6 RPS, the, the heavier the weight, the more resistance, the bigger the propeller you have, um, you know, he's not going to ever be able to get up to that 6 RPS. The only way to do it is reduce load. The way to reduce load is smaller propeller or you can do a smaller gear ratio 
Um, and so I'm just decreasing the gear ratio out. So. All right, let's spawn it now. So again, I'm not looking for ultra, ultra, ultra speed. Um, you know, this is giving me a good speed with full, um, with full oil in there. We'll call it oil for what's in the storage tank or in the commodity tank. All right, engines are stabilized. Why is this? What's happening here? What's going on here? Something happened here. That's pissing me off now. Oh, what are we doing here? Oh, right here. Exhaust didn't get moved. So I'm just going to do this. This is the easy one. You know, we were blowing enough exhaust and that we didn't need much exhaust. And then as soon as we got powered up, it uh, robbed my exhaust. All right, good. All right, so this is where the relationship between gearing and loading or overloading is going to come into play. We could potentially be going slower now, or we could be going faster. It looks like we're going slower, and that's because so our in, so our RPS might be higher, which it is. We're up to 297, but the rotations are lower. You're going to get to a point where as you add more load, your RPS goes down. So right there, we're only doing eight knots. Okay. What do we, oh no, let me think where I was at there. So what do I need for a gear ratio? Yeah. Oh, I, I did the math wrong in my head. I was doing it in my head, sorry guys. That's why. So no wonder I was all screwed up. I was all screwed up here. Um, it was a three times three is um, six to, well, three times three is nine. No wonder I'm, my brain. Uh, so when it was a three to two, it's it's three times three is nine. Uh, two times two is four. Four over nine, so it'd be nine divided by four. That's a two point two five gear ratio. Um, you know the six five, like I said, is one two. But then we have six times six. I was doing it all wrong. I just my brain. Six times six is thirty six, and then that would be divided by twenty five. Uh, be five times five. That would be a 1.44. That's where I was having a brain fart. And so we're going much, much slower. We had, let me make sure that's right again. 6 times 6, 36. Yep, divided by 5 times 5 is 25. Yes, that's a 1.44. So we're going quite a bit slower. Let's go ahead and try. And then the other one we did was a 3, 3, 2, and a 6, 5. So it would be 3 times 6. That's going to be 18. And then it's uh, five times two is ten. Yeah, I did that one right. So let's try. Let's try this really quick. Let's try a two to one. And then we're gonna probably have to back it down from this. You know, the benefit is you're you're trading torque for RPS or RPS for torque, depending on which way it's facing. The greater your torque, the bigger the propeller you can move, the slower it can move, and it gives you good stability when carrying a heavy load, like say an enormous tanker. You know, you might the your slowest speed might be three knots, your fastest speed might be six knots, but you can push millions and millions of liters of oil. You know, and so that's the benefit of that. You know, if you w want something with a really wide operation range, then um, you know you're going to be trading a lot of torque for RPS. So right there, that's eight. That's uh, so that's around 16 knots. What's our 276? So 276 divided by 60, that's 4.6. So that's not bad. That's So that's 4.6 RPS. So that's a pretty nice low RPS. And we're doing a pretty good speed here. This is full of, you know, oil and for all intents and purposes. All intents and purposes. All right, so I need to ballast that bow a little bit again. 
Stability system is going to help, but this is working out pretty well. Let's get a little picky picky here. But yeah, so um, I'm liking how this is coming. So I might work on this more during the career build series, but I didn't want to have, like, it was all building, 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 and I want to do some missions. So get into that. But, um, you know, this is coming along nicely. It's a nice little tug. Um, tug with. <laughs> and most of what I build is tug with. So this is a nice uh, little tanker. It's convenient, it's easy, it's small. Let's see, I might still have the fuel gauges hooked up to it. So let's see what our capacities are. So that's so this is my fuel, I believe. That is water ballast. And this here is... So this here is how much commodity. So just under 8,000 liters. So that's pretty good. Um, kind of, you know, one of the reasons I want a small one like this is... You know, let's look at some numbers here really quick. So let's say we went down south. You know, we're doing a good solid 16 knots. We went down south. And so kind of talking career build series. Let's say it by jet fuel. All right, so that would be, what is that, 1.43? So it would be uh, 1, 1.43 times 7,800, essentially. That's, um, I would need to spend $11,154 to fill it. And so, you know, everybody's like, oh, let's have, have an enormous tank or put more capacity in there. Well, you have to have the money to be able to buy the commodity. And so, like, a lot of people during the challenge, you know, have been j just trying to squeeze more and more capacity. Well, the problem is, do you have the money to buy the goods? Now, what you would do is, let's say you don't have a lot of money. Let's say you don't have 11000 Well, switch to something like diesel. So what's diesel going to cost me? So uh, diesel is, let's say, 36 So $0.36. Cents times 7,800, that's $2,808. So you can fill it with diesel. You're going to make less money overall with diesel, but you can fill the, the entire capacity up. And so for so having an enormous volume might sound like a great idea, but it limits you to pretty much diesel or buying oil. You know, jet fuel is going to be too expensive for you to fill an entire thing. The profit's going to be higher, but you have to be able to buy the actual commodity to be able to then trade it for a higher price. You know, so let's see. So if we're talking, let's let's talk jet fuel here. So dollar uh, forty-three, and the most convenient place for us to sell it because this is the same seed as the career build series. So the most convenient place is there. So um, what's that? Four ninety-three. So it'd be four point nine three minus one point four three equals. So that's three dollars and fifty cents per liter of profit. So then we multiply that by seventy-eight hundred. And so one run would get us $27,000. And so, you know, a lot of people will have, it, they'll take issue with the fact of how long it takes to fill things. Well, one of the things you can do is you can do um, high profit commodities like jet fuel, and you can do fewer trips. So, for example, like I will do, last career build series, I took my Damon T800, which holds like 450,000 liters of oil. And I bought the oil really cheap up at the Arctic. And so if you look, that's uh, not showing it. Come on, show me where the where an oil buy is. Here's an oil buy here. So oil buy there is 18 cents. So 18 cents. And then you sell it here for, if I can ever get there, 18 cents. So it would be uh, 2.86 minus 0.18. That's $2.68 profit. Multiply that by 450000 uh, And so that's $1.2 million. So one run from up there with oil in a tanker all the way down here will net you... Um, not, not, you know, I didn't put in what, what it would cost you to buy it, but... You know, it's 18 cents times four. You know, so it's you, you're gonna get a 1.2 million. Let's see what it would cost you to fill it. So again, you need to have the you need to be able to have the money to fill the sucker. So that's 450,000 liters times 0.18. So you need 81 grand in cash just to be able to do it. So like, currently in the career builds or in the in the build challenge, a lot of people are trying to just for you know for it's part of the challenge, not a big deal, but it's they're trying to increase the capacity. Well. You just need to keep in mind that you're going to be limited in what you can buy. You can't. If you have a huge capacity, the likelihood early game you're going to be able to fill it with jet fuel is probably pretty slim. 
you're going to have to fill it with some uh, lower value commodities like oil or diesel to be able to make it worthwhile because you're just not going to be able to have the seed capital. You, you saw how it was $2,800 for me to fill it with diesel and it's um, $11,000 to fill it with jet fuel. Well, I'm going to make more money selling the jet fuel, but I need to have eight grand or 11 grand on hand, so I need to be able to launch the vessel plus put eight grand in, or 11 grand, I keep saying eight grand, 11,000 and eight grand is how much capacity we have, and then head back, and then, yay, I make good profit. But the other thing you could do, too, is if you don't like, you know, if you want to, you know, just a little bit of cash, for example, there is diesel here for 35 cents. What does this sell? I can't remember. Diesel. So here is, um, that's 30 cents. So you can make 30 cents profit right with a really quick trip. So that's um, 0.3 times 7,800. That's uh, $2,300 per run. Well, you're going to have to do 10 runs to equal the one jet fuel run. So you could come down here. You could get jet fuel. You could go up here. It's a longer run, but you'd have to go back and forth 10 times. Well, you also have to realize you're having to fill your your ship 100% with that diesel every time. So it actually takes you longer because this is one trip down. You know, let's not count the trip down. Let's count the trip to sell. So you're here, right? Now you have to fill it. So you have to fill 7,800 liters. So however long that takes, let's say it takes 10 minutes. Okay, that's 10 minutes. Then you travel up here. Well, of course, this distance is a lot longer. But then it's going to take you, say, 10 minutes to empty. So you have 20 minutes of fill and empty. Well, this you have to do 10 times. Well, guess what? You're still filling and emptying 7,800 every time. Well, it's going to be, you know, it's going to take you 10, 20 minutes total to fill and empty. So if you're doing 10 trips, right, that's 200 minutes of filling and emptying. And so it might seem like a no-brainer, but, you know, it, it actually might be more efficient. Come down here. Grab jet fuel, come up here, empty it once, go back. You know, take your 27 grand and run. You know, so it's kind of up to how you want to play, and, and that's why capacity isn't always king. Um, you know, the benefit of capacity is, you know, the, there's other benefits to capacity. For example, the greater my capacity here, the fewer trips I have to take down here, right? So I could come, and I could come down. Let's say I come down here, right? So instead of running, let's say I take this boat down, I'm going to do jet fuel. I have to go from here to here to make 27 grand. Well, I could take my Damon TA-800, right? I'm making 30 cents per run, or 30 cents per liter, right, of profit. Multiply that by 450,000 liters. I make $135,000 to take the Damon T-800 and to go from here to here and empty it, right? I would have to do, was that five trips? you know, in the neighborhood of five or more, you know, around five trips to be able to make that in jet fuel. And so, yeah, my fill and empty times are going to be a lot longer, but I don't, I only have to come down here once, so my travel times are almost non-existent, right? And so it's all up to how you want to play. Do I want to do a lot of traveling? No, I don't. Okay, well, then you want to do high quantity. Do you have a lot of money? No. Okay, well, you have to do high commodity, low value goods, i.e. diesel, or, or oil, and you want to make the fewest number of trips, and you know what, if you want to go AFK, you can sit it there and have it empty all day, and it doesn't matter. Like, I did that oil trip from the Arctic, and I let it fill for two hours, went and did errands. I think I went and uh, raked the leaves in the yard, and then a couple hours, did a bunch of errands. A couple hours later, I was like, oh, it's all full. I put it on autopilot out of the Arctic. It was going to take four hours, to go from the Arctic down to the refinery island. So I, you know, and that was right around when I went to bed. So when I went to bed, I launched the game. I uh, sent it from the Arctic down to the refinery. Then when I woke up, it was sitting there on the autopilot. It shut off, the engines were, I think the engines auto shut off or something. Oh, the harbor generator automatically comes off. The engines were idled. So it burned barely any fuel. I think I spent like six grand in fuel. So it was negligible. And then I went, I parked it at dock. Started, started unloading. It would take two hours to unload. And I went and did errands and did other things. And so it took a, a grand total of eight hours. Well, guess what? That made me $1.2 million for my last career build series. I had more money than I needed for a while there. And so 
you know, that made it so I only had to do one trip and that was it. But I needed a, enough cash to be able, to, I need 80 grand to be able to buy all that oil. So uh, it's all up how you want to play. You know, if you want to, if you like traversal like this, like actually heading down there, you know, you might want to do something where you have to do a lot of trips. If you don't like that, you know, you may not want to do that, you know. So uh, things to consider. But I hope you guys enjoyed kind of watching this going. And so this should be getting in the career build series here pretty soon. So see you later.